Yes, indeed. Welcome, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Welcome once again to another edition of The Story Behind the Story. Fifth day of September. My goodness, time is flying. Uh, just at this time last week, we were listening to the Republicans putting on their best public relations face. Now we get to listen to the Democrats. I'm sorry, the Democrats. Going on. I'm going to tell you, folks, wow, what a, what a story. Here in the Salt Lake Tribune <laughs> newspaper, we have Senator Harry Reid coming full circle. Latter-day Saint, LDS, Mormons, ladies and gentlemen, Democrats should hold their heads high. Wow. <laughs> Charlotte, North Carolina. Quote, Don Miller feels a bit like an outcast in the Georgia community. She's a Mormon and a Democrat. While Mitt Romney, possibly the world's most famous Mormon, is a Republican presidential candidate. That may explain why Miller and her friend Dana Cork drove three hours to Charlotte on Tuesday for the chance to mingle with like-minded Mormons such as Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid. They just couldn't pass up the first national gathering of LDS Democrats, an event organized by the Utah Democratic Party, timed right before the official beginning of the party's national convention. What Miller heard from Senator Reid, Democrat from Nevada, is that he's a Democrat, because of his faith and not in spite of it. <laughs> and that people like Miller should, quote, be proud of who they are and should not, quote, be afraid of what your neighbors think. Okay, I get it. <laughs> Harry Reid spoke in a crowded hotel room before a bank of television cameras where reporters and Mormons from the North Carolina area and those who are delegates to the convention. He told them Romney isn't the first Mormon to run for president, though he might be the most conservative. He also said LDS beliefs about caring for the poor and protecting the environment, fall in line with his votes in the Senate. Quote, as far as I'm concerned, Reed said, every member of the church should be an environmentalist. After a speech, the reporters asked him about Utah. Quote, the only message I have for Utah, he said, is to get a little more moderate it's just a little too right-wing. MENT is a recruiting tool for the Democratic Party in Utah and in western states with large Mormon populations. The event began with a prayer and even included the LDS hymn, Have I Done Any Good in the World Today? Led by Crystal Young-Otterstrom. At Reed's insistence. Scott Howell, the Democratic Senate candidate from Utah, also spoke, calling the gathering a, quote, a dream come true. He told the gathering of a conversation he had with the late LDS President Gordon Bittner Hinckley. Howell, a former Utah Senate minority leader, told Hinckley, of an offer to lead the Appropriations Committee if he would switch parties. According to Hal Hinckley told him, quote, Young man, you will not join that Republican Party. We need good men and women in both parties. We are not a Republican church. Of course they're not, ladies and gentlemen. Of course they're not. Just like the good uh, Edomites that they are, they need both people, both in both parties, to keep the dialectic going strong. Quote, many of the LDS Democrats defended their political choice by arguing that Democrats take better care of the poor 
than do the Republicans. That's how Mormon Jackson Olson of Raleigh, North Carolina, feels, and he isn't about to vote for Romney just because they share the same faith. Quote, I'm not voting for a prophet. I'm voting for a president, and Romney doesn't represent what I think is best for America, said Olson, who grew up in Logan, Utah. But Chad Sorensen, a registered Republican from Charlotte, is leading toward Romney in part because of his business experience, but also because he is a Mormon. Quote, I know where he comes from. I know what values he has, said Sorensen. Basically, I know I can trust him. <laughs> oh, good heavens. There's a lot of billboards. I'm going to just, just jump in here. There's a lot of billboards springing up across the I-15 corridor in uh, Utah. Big, beautiful, uh, blue, boundaried, brand-new billboards that has a picture of our wonderful Senator Orrin Hatch. And the message is clear. It's just that it's time, time for Utah to lead the nation. Leadership, Utah. To leader, Utah is going to lead the nation. Utah. What he's really saying to me is it's time for Mormons to lead. Yeah. Representative Jason Chaffetz. Republican Utah is in Charlotte also to counter the Democratic message, but he said he, quote, would applaud the Utah Democratic Party's outreach to Mormons and said, quote, we need good people involved in both parties. Though he takes issue with those who claim that Democrats care more about the poor, Quote, Democrats have no corner on compassion, he said. I just believe we need to help teach people how to fish, not just hand out fish to everybody, he said. Chaffetz is one of 15 members of Congress who are Mormon, a group that includes all of the federal lawmakers from Utah. Reed is one of four who happen to be Democrats. The other Democratic Mormons are Senator Tom Udall of New Mexico, Representative Jim Matheson of Utah, and Representative Ani Falemovanga of American, America Samoa. <sighs> Folks, yeah, it's, it's more of the same. It's both parties are simply the same pieces of sides of the same counterfeit coin, just opposite sides of the coin. I want to, uh, to go into the editorial page. I was going to talk about this yesterday. This was my backup in case my guests had a problem. And by the way, I hope you enjoyed that, sh that show yesterday, my program. I did, this, is, this is an amazing, amazing story. This, uh, the story of the boars, the farmers of South Africa. What an incredible story. How they've been struggling to form a free republic and how the liberal media, the Edomite-controlled media, has kept uh, the propaganda in place. No, well, you see, there's a, a takeover. Apartheid is evil. Apartheid is racist. So now we have flat-out communism, a communistic regime that is uh, just just multiple times worse for everybody. And the genocide that's going on, the attacks, the murders, the shootings targeting whites, and it's the, the, the press won't talk about that because it's can't. It's not, it's not politically correct to talk about blacks shooting whites. But if it was white men shooting blacks, boy, it's all over the news. This uh, article, this is editorial by Paul Krugman, appeared in the New York Times newspaper and is reprinted here in the Salt Lake Tribune. I was going to talk about this. came over the weekend in the New York Times. And the headline 
from Mr. Krugman simply reads, Paul Ryan is the Rosie Ruiz of politics. Remember Rosie Ruiz, question mark, in 1980, she was the first woman to cross the finish line at the Boston Marathon. Except it turned out that she hadn't actually run most of the race. It was found out that she had sneaked onto the course around a mile from the end. Remember that story? It was amazing. Ever since her name, she has symbolized a particular kind of fraud in which people claim credit for achieving things they have not, in fact, achieved. And these days, Paul Krugman writes, Paul Ryan is the Rosie Ruiz of American politics. This would have been an, an apt comparison even before the curious story of Ryan's own marathon came to light. Still, that's quite a story, so let's talk about it, it first. It started when Hugh Hewitt, a right-wing talk radio host, interviewed Ryan. In that interview, the vice presidential candidate boasted about his fitness declaring that he had once run a marathon in less than three hours. This claim piqued the interest of Runner's World magazine, which noted that all marathon times are recorded, and that it was unable to find any evidence of Ryan's accomplishment. It eventually transpired that Ryan had indeed once run a marathon, but that his time was actually more than four hours. In a statement issued by a spokesman, Ryan tried to laugh the whole thing off. It's a simple error. But you see, serious runners find that implausible. For the difference between sub three and over four is the difference between extraordinary and perfectly ordinary. And it's simply not something a runner could ever get wrong. And this is key, folks. Listen up. Unless, unless he's a fabulous who imagines his own reality. And does suggesting that Ryan is delusional rather than dishonest actually make the situation any better? <laughs> Actually, no, makes it worse, in my opinion. Continuing on with Paul Kregman, what brings us back to the real issues of this presidential campaign? Obviously, nobody cares about how fast Ryan can run. And even his strange marathon misstatement wouldn't be worth talking about in isolation. What makes this incident so striking is instead the way in which it resonates with the essential rosy ruizness of Ryan's whole political persona, which is simply built around big boasts about accomplishments he hasn't accomplished. For Ryan, as you may recall, has positioned himself as an icon of truth-telling, and fiscal responsibility, while offering policy proposals that are neither honest nor responsible. He calls for huge tax cuts, while proposing specific spending cuts that, while inflicting immense hardships on our most vulnerable citizens, would fall far short of making up for the revenue losses. See, that's a big lie right there, Mr. Krugman. Revenue. Revenue. you got to find revenue. We'll talk about that. This is what I want to get at today in today's story behind the story. The definition of government revenue. 
the Internal Revenue Service. Oh, boy. Kregman continues, his claims to reduce the deficit therefore rely on assertions that he would make up for the lost revenue by closing loopholes that he refuses to specify and achieve further large spending cuts in ways that he also refuses to specify. But wait, didn't the Congressional Budget Office evaluate Ryan's plan and conclude that it would indeed reduce the deficit? I'm glad you asked that. You see, the Budget Office didn't actually evaluate his plan because there weren't enough details. Instead, it let Ryan specify paths for future spending and revenue, while noting, and what sounds like to me a hint of snark, that, quote, no proposals were specified that would generate that path, end quote. So Ryan basically told the budget office to assume that his plan would slash the deficit, then claim the resulting report as vindication of his deficit-slashing claims. Sorry, but that's the policy equivalent of sneaking into a marathon near the finish line and claiming victory. Well, it's even more important than that, folks. What about the people that are really running the entire race? And I submit that's we the people. We the people are the ones doing the work. We're the ones running the race. And here we have these corner cutters, these rosy Ruizes stealing from us. I've had about enough of it. Krugman writes, quote, Still, Mittens Romney, not Ryan, is the presidential candidate, although that's sometimes hard to remember. So how does Romney slash Ryan differ from Ryan alone? It's worse. Like the Ryan plan, the Romney plan offers huge tax breaks to corporations and the wealthy while pledging to offset these cuts by closing unspecified loopholes. But Romney adds to the implausibility by also demanding higher defense spending and eliminating the Medicare cost savings contained in Obamacare. Realistically, the Romney plan would explode the deficit, not reduce it. Again, we need to, we need to, def to define the term deficit, folks. And we'll do that again on the show today. <sighs> Kregman writes, quote, Yet Romney boasts about his fiscal responsibility. In Tampa, he accused President Barack Obama of hurting the economy with big deficits. Parentheses, while also declaring that Obama was destroying jobs by cutting military spending. Go figure. And then declared that, quote, we will cut the deficit and put America on track to a balanced budget. Yep. And he's another Rosie Ruiz Republican. So what is this election about? To be sure, it's about different visions of society, about Medicare versus voucher care, about preserving the safety net versus destroying it. But it's also a test of how far politicians can bend the truth. This is surely the first time one of our major parties has run a campaign so completely fraudulent, making claims so at odds with the reality of its policy proposals. But if the Romney-Ryan ticket wins, it won't be the last. Krugman... Give me a flippin' break, you liberal pinko. I mean, as if, as if Barack Hussein Obama and Harry Reid aren't doing the exact same thing. Folks, this is the whole problem. You see, both sides are talking mishmash, bending the truth, lying through their teeth, and doing nothing but covering up for the real problem. And this is the whole reason why we have a two-party bicameral system to keep people from looking at the real problem 
and the media is complicit in all this. Whether they do, whether they're doing it ignorantly or, or by design, it doesn't really matter. The end result is the same. They're keeping people hypnotized and not looking at the real problem. And the real problem is simply, like I said before, what is the deficit? Who do we owe the deficit to, folks? You've got to define the deficit. You've got to define who they are that control this country's strings. And then you've got to analyze, is that what the founding fathers envisioned? It's so simple to me, it's like, why can't anybody else see the absolute proof of the picture? You see, there's no problem with the United States Treasury printing as much money as they need to keep America running smoothly to facilitate, and I emphasize facilitate, trade and commerce. That's the whole reason we have currency, folks. It's economics 101. However, you cannot issue more currency than the gross domestic product justifies. Otherwise, you have something called hyperinflation. The bottom line, folks, is this. We do not need a third party, a private, for-profit corporation printing our money supply and charging high usurious usury interest on that privilege. That's the problem plaguing America. That's the problem plaguing the world. That's the problem plaguing South Africa and other nations. And until we, the people, get a handle on that and understand it and then demand changes, nothing will ever change. Nothing will ever happen. A meaningful. It's, the, it's following the, the very definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different result. It will never change. Got to get to the root of the problem. Everything else is superfluous. Everything else is fluff. Everything else is nothing but meaningless rhetoric. Hot air, folks. Nothing else matters. Can't you see that? Oh, my goodness, folks. Take This country needs to take back our currency from the banksters. These... 13 elitist Edomite, they call themselves Jews, but are not, but are the synagogue of Satan, the Ashkenazi Khazars. We have to understand who they are, the big hoax, the H-O-A-X, capital letters, hoax. They have perpetrated on this country since the days of Woodrow Wilson in 1913. This great country, this wonderful country that I love, hypnotized by the wars in Europe, World War One and Two, hypnotized, not knowing really who is profiting by these great wars, who is causing bondage. The same groups, folks. Wall Street, the same banksters that control the Federal Reserve, funded Adolf Hitler and the Nazi regime into power. And Adolf Hitler was a fantastic rabble-rouser, going up on and, and making oration speeches to the good Christian people of Germany. Wanting them to stand for the fatherland, to fight for Christian principles, and they did. And millions were exterminated by design of these Edomite Satanists behind the curtain. Oh, they've done a fantastic job since the days of the Civil War. Very few people see the whole picture. Very few people see the problem. I, for one, do see the problem. I, for one, will keep talking about the problem. And hopefully enough people can somehow 
wake up to understand what needs to be done in this country. We talk about the Tea Party. This and that. It's not good enough to stand on that. We've got to have a basic platform of the Tea Party, whatever you want to call it, the, the Greenback Party. I don't care. we well, got to disenfranchise the Federal Reserve. You've got to wipe away the deficits because there should be no there is no such thing as deficit spending in a truly free republic. Can't you see that? The only the definition of the deficit, folks, is the money, the compound interest, the debt to the banksters. That's the deficit, and it's all based on hoax and fraud because they're stealing, systematically stealing everything that we stand for and produce as Christian people in this country. It's very simple. Basic English common law, folks, is very clear that contracts based on fraud, and fraud simply means that full disclosure is not given, the truth has not been given, the people haven't signed on to it with full Understanding, that's the very definition of a fraud and a hoax. Contracts based on fraud are null and void. This Federal Reserve contract with America was, was brought in the dark, darkness of night and the, passed through the Congress with an absolute uh, skullduggery and bribery and fraud of the highest order. Murder was involved, ladies and gentlemen. People like Charles Lindbergh had, had family members kidnapped and extorted. Many, many people that understood the complete and total picture of the banksters were shut up and silenced and murdered by the organized mafia criminals, these dark lords. Man, America needs to wake up and wake up now. The deficit, folks, continues to grow. Four trillion dollars just interest alone this year. I know nearly 16 trillion dollars of total deficit debt. Debt to who? Debt to these 13 Illuminati bloodline families. That's who. Think about it as we take a break. We'll come back with more. Story by the story continues. Don't go away. Ladies and gentlemen, I live in the city and I walk the streets. I walk the country lanes. I, I do get down and talk to the people. I know what's uh, what's plaguing America. I talk to the everyday people. I'm I'm one of them. I'm not some person sitting up in the ivory tower dictating to people out of false sense of reality, folks. It's just so simple. The Federal Reserve is a fraud. It's a for-profit. It is a for-profit private corporation. Just like Federal Express. Federal Reserve. What a name. And it does one thing. It makes money based on supplying our money supply. That's what it does. And they have way, way, way too much power. Did you elect Bernard Bernanke to his position? Did you elect Hank Greenspan to his position? Of course you didn't. Who did? Oh, do you think the president? No, the president just, just rubber stamped. The most powerful, really the most powerful man in America is not President Barack Obama, it's Bernard Bernanke. When he speaks, the whole market listens. The world listens. That's not what the founding fathers envisioned. We, can, we can't have a democracy, or let alone a republic, with this type of structure. It's simply needs to be exposed. They've made their profits. They've made their booty. They've made their ill-gotten gains. That's enough. Cut it off. It's done. Goodbye. Kaput. Now the media will scream and yell, this is insurrectionism. This is 
anti-government rhetoric. This needs to be shut down, and you're causing problems, Dr. Rod, by saying this. No, no, no. No, 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 no. I'm talking solutions to the problem. The government, the government does not need revenue. They don't need it. They have a printing press in their basement. Can't you get it through your heads, ladies and gentlemen? You don't need to collect revenue to run a government. You need honest government to be completely open and transparent to not take more than the average median American makes, to do no more or less, to not charter private jets and entourages to go to Hawaii, Michelle Obama and, and, and company, to not live like a queen of Sheba, to live like the average American leads. Because a leader of America in a free republic is no better or worse than the average American in the city. And you better wake up to that. That's what's wrong with America, folks. Can't, you've got to understand it. The government doesn't need revenue. No, what needs revenue is the banksters to collect their profits, their usury interests on their money supply that they fraudulently are supplying, that we don't need to have them supply it, you see. It's incredible. What an incredible hoax. And you've got these talking heads, these editorialists in the New York Times like Paul Krugman. Never, they'll never print anything to expose this scam. So that's complicity. Because who owns the media? The same people. Need to increase revenue. So you have all this godly, gobbledygook. Paul Ryan. Well, I can have congressional budget office. I'll cut spending. I'll cut. I'll cut spending. I'll give tax breaks. Ah, Mr. Ryan, Mr. Romney, Mr. Obama. We don't need the IRS. We don't need the Internal Revenue Service collectors of the usurious debt if you take away the debt. If you take away the Federal Reserve, there's no need for internal revenue. Can't you see it, folks? There is no need. There is no need for the IRS that the government itself does what the Founding Fathers said it should do to, reg to itself issue the currency. Then it's, you know, there's an oversight committee. A, a group of citizens need to make sure that there's not too much money being printed and circulated. It has to be based, again, on gross domestic product and the production of natural resources. That's the wealth of America. When the government doesn't own those things, we the people own these things. The BLM, the Bureau of Land Management, the Forest Service, the U.S. Parks Service, ladies and gentlemen, they're just custodians. We the people own the public lands. We the people own the resources. Whether it's mineral or the incredible vast amount of oil under the North Dakota soils. That should not be granted to any one person. That's ridiculous. Any one group of corporation making untold billions of dollars pumping that raw crew out of North Dakota. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, shipping it to China. Huh. My goodness. I've been talking about this for years and years. That oil field's been mapped and blocked and drilled. Estimates show that it's got more oil there, many times more oil than all the entire Middle East. And the reality is you take a page out of 
Kuwait's book. You take a page out of Muammar Gaddafi's Green Book. Yeah, this evil mad dog dictator of Libya. And so the press, the Israeli-controlled media would like you to believe. Take a page out of Kuwait's book and take a page out of Libya's book and you realize, as Gaddafi said, that the oil is the people's resource. This Bakken oil field reserve in eastern Montana and North Dakota, ladies and gentlemen, is everybody's resource. It's not just some big banks to re Chevron, Standard Oil, Rockefeller asset. It's we the people that own that. My goodness. When you nationalize that oil field, folks, every man, woman, and child, child in America is multi, multi-millionaire. What do you need to tax people for, you see? The Democratic Party now is doing one thing, and that's divisive. They're dividing people into class struggles, wanting people to think, well, the rich get richer, this this Republican Party, this this Gordon Gecko leading it, they, they're, they're enemies. They're enemy of the poor guy. And that's going to be, the, the divisiveness is going to get more and more and more intense. The haves versus the have-nots. That's by design, folks. Again, it's more smoke screen. It's smoke and mirrors keeping you diverted from the real issues here. And that issue needs to be who are the families of the Federal Reserve banking system. What have they done to America over the last century, the last 100 years, the last 99 years, from 1913 to 2012? And is America better off because of them? Or was it better than just been wiped off the face of the earth and flushed down the toilet? Think about it. The deficit is an illusion. It's smoke and mirrors. You'll never be able to pay that off, people, because interest, you see, there's never enough money Supplied to pay the total interest off. It's an accumulation. It's it's untenable. It's a bankrupting system. The only answer is to keep borrowing more and more and more and giving these SOBs more and more and more unbridled power. Their man is Willard Mittens Romney. The Mossad, the gangster, bankster families that really control Israel, the Rothschilds, primarily, ladies and gentlemen, are the culprits. The thing that they fear the worst is this talk right now that I'm talking about. That's what they fear the worst. They fear that people will wake up to the, that they've been scammed and bamboozled. They fear that in the worst way. They fear that those Somebody will declare, hey, look, that emperor is buck naked. He has no clothes on. The system is flat out based on a scam of just incredible proportions. And worse, like the, like Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz, the answer has always been right there at our feet. The power of the people to regulate their own currency. Abraham Lincoln, God rest his soul, found that out at the very last part of his earthly life. And I submit that's exactly why they, the international banking cartel, and their subversive agents had him assassinated. How dare, how dare he give the order to the treasury to issue... Lincoln Greenbacks outside of a central banking cartel. How dare he do that? That's the whole reason why we initiated the Civil War, you see, was to 
bring the United States under debt and keep the cycle rolling, going to our power in the synagogue. That's the agenda. That was the agenda from the day one. And ladies and gentlemen, my research has shown that the Tsar of Russia sent emissaries to Lincoln and explained it all. The Tsar's secret police, they understood who was behind the formation. They understood who was funding and, and causing the unrest. God bless Robert E. Lee. He, he, had, I, I, he finally understood too, I submit. That's why Lincoln issued the orders. Let them up easy. With the, the South, they're our brethren. They're our brothers. They're our sons. The Civil War is an absolute, absolute tragedy. The death on both sides, fighting over nationality and pride. Folks, the slavery issue was a sub-issue. It wasn't the primary issue. Southern pride. The Southern gentleman, and the other, that's, it's all part of it. You see, how dare those damn Yankees tell us how to run our plantations. Incredible. The media, the banksters, the power brokers fomented the Civil War, the secession of South Carolina, the incredible loss of life, over 750,000 American men and boys butchered. What a waste. Every war is a waste. Just look and see who profits by it. Who makes the money? Who supplies the gunpowder, the high explosives, the rockets, the cruise missiles. And you see them indelib indelibly tied, as I have done, to the same banking families of the Federal Reserve. That's where we, the people, the Christian people of America, needs to wake up and see who they are. They are not Christians. They are anti-Christians. They are the worst scum lowest scum of the satanic barrel, folks. The truth shall set you free, Jesus Christ said. The light of truth will break through this dark prison. The question becomes, will enough Americans have the guts to stand and wave the banner of truth and say, look, we're exposing this. My friend, Dane Phillips, I met Dane Phillips just two years ago. We need a thousand, need ten thousand more Dane Phillips. Who's he is tirelessly crossing this country, and he's fearless. He's in the face of people saying, "Why aren't you talking about the Federal Reserve? You got to talk about the problems with the Fed. You got to expose the Federal Reserve." God bless Dane Phillips. He put this book out. Battle him. It's exactly what it, we're in a battle, folks. Very dark, satanic force. And if we claim to be Christian, we've got to stand against it. And we've got to regain our freedoms. you got to begin at the very basics, and that's exposing the Federal Reserve and disenfranchising it. We don't need it, never have. We don't need these slave masters putting us in bondage. We talk about being slaves. You can't possibly be free with this type of a system. We are nothing but hypnotized vassals of a feudal lord overlords. And until we wake up, until we get educated as to what the system is all about and just simply disenfranchise it, like I said earlier, nothing 
meaningful will ever change. We're still like keep having these Ruizes, these Rosies come in and they'll spout off all the right re- rhetoric, the rosy releases, the shortcuts, the takers, and nobody is discussing, nobody in the mainstream media is discussing the problem of the Federal Reserve and the whole IRS scam. Nobody. And that's a problem. What is it going to take, ladies and gentlemen? Let me just tell you very simply the formula and perhaps it may take a a new third party I don't know but there has to be there has to be some form of break in the media we start with this simple little radio talk show the wisdom that I'm going to be telling you about today is just there is nothing nothing wrong and, and corrupt about the system I'm going to talk to you about the vision that I personally have to change this country it's just going to have to, it just means America uh, Americans of all shape and size big or small need to unite together not be divisive against each other the rich have got to reach out to the poor the Mormons have got to reach out with the Christians you've got to unite under the banner of truth once and for all, to heal this country. The truth is simply this, folks. Number one, the right to print currency, to regulate currency, is vested in one body only. That's the Department of the Treasury. End of story. There is no private, for-profit corporation doing it for them in the contract. That's the very basic plank of the platform. See, that's a big lie. The Federal Reserve has no more right to analyze and to provide influx in currency or lack thereof. That's the first big lie. The Treasury can do it themselves and do it interest-free. The only thing it costs is two or three cents per bill. Treasury note, not Federal Reserve note. Simple. It's a simple difference. You immediately, you see, you stop the deficit. You immediately reduce it. And then you take it to court. You say, look, this deficit is based on fraud. And, again, like I said, under basic common law, you can easily prove the fraud of this structure. And if fraudulent, the deficit is meaningless. It's like it's like a scam where a guy comes into to uh, into you and says, "Well, you know, look, give me your company, sign over this company, and and I'll pay you for it. I'll pay you five hundred thousand dollars for this company." Okay, so you sign you sign a trustee based on a promise to pay a debt to pay. Suppose this guy never makes you a payment, but continues to, gosh, they just give you false payments instead. Instead of giving you gold for it, he gives you lead painted with gold, and you think it's gold. He may have possession of your property, but under common law, when the whole thing is exposed and you realize you've been given lead bars, not gold, that you have been fraudulently dealt with, the honest court of law will say you own your give your property back and this fraudster should be but for the good of all society should be incarcerated, maybe even drawn and quartered and tarred and feathered. You see. Fraud negates all contracts, ladies and gentlemen, so the national debt, as far as I'm concerned, nothing but a Popcorn fart, to use the simple phrase. It's meaningless. It stinks a little bit, but it's, it's, it's not going to hurt you. It's fraudulent, folks. That's the exposition. 
We're going to take a break. We'll come back with America in Jeopardy, top of the hour. Please stay tuned. This is the story behind the story. Behind the story. Yes, indeed. Let's uh, top of the hour. Let's do America, America's favorite game show, America in Jeopardy. Here we go. Just mere days after signing executive orders to cause the U.S. Treasury to print their own money, this amazing American leader was assassinated. Yeah, I'm sure you can get this one, folks. Who was Abraham Lincoln? Yeah, look at uh, look at what happened during the years of the Civil War during Abraham Lincoln and the so-called Seward's folly, folks. The purchase of Alaska, this incredible state of Alaska, occurred uh, during this administration. And Seward, Seward was the second. Yeah, there was so much. Uh, it's going on with the Russian czar and the Lincoln administration. Shortly after the Civil War ended, actually the decades after the Civil War, there was so much uh, manipulation in the so-called pale of settlement. The, the part of Russia where the Tsar had set up to be the homeland for the wandering Khazar, so-called Jew. They call it the Pale of Settlement. They were expanding beyond the Pale of Settlement. That's where we get the term beyond the Pale, by the way. There was so much going on during this time frame. The Tsar's internal police were saying, you know, this minute of the pale of settlement by these very wealthy Wall Street Khazars. Manipulations on a world scale is incredible. The Secret Service, the intelligence arm, really, of the Tsar was keeping Abraham Lincoln and his cabinet informed. They were. After the death of Lincoln and in the succeeding years, what happened is, again, the eventual expose, the documents of the so-called protocols of the wise men of Zion came to light. The indelible proof of a massive conspiracy to control the entire world. Call it a Reich and Third Reich. Call it a New World Order. Whatever you want to call it, that's the agenda. Adolf Hitler was just a pawn of that. Please don't be, please, ladies and gentlemen, that listen to this, I think Adolf Hitler wasn't such a bad guy. Oh, he said a lot of the right things as far as exposing the bankers, you bet, but he was part of their pawn. He took their money. He brought them, brought the Third Reich into a military power and, and killed millions of people. This man was a, a willing pawn. He's not a good guy, all right? Hegelian dialectic in action again. The protocols of the wise men of Zion lay it out. And you've got to study those protocols to understand what I'm talking about and why it's so critically important to understand the the antics of the Federal Reserve and who they really, who they are, who the they are. They really are the power behind the presidency and behind both parties. And you understand who picks a Mia Love from Saratoga Springs, Utah, to come up as a token black woman to give a spotlight speech at the Republican National Committee, just like they picked this. Illinois black senator to give a keynote speech at the Democratic National Convention that turned into a presidency for this imposter, this unnatural-born citizen. 
has no business being president. Has no business. For he wasn't born in America. The Constitution is just a piece of paper to these people. It means nothing. And they have the power to keep it hidden. The thing they fear the worst is that people will, grassroots people will wake into the big hoax. The big hoax that involves their money in their bank account and their billfold in their wallet. We need to take care of our senior citizens, Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security for those retired people. Absolutely. The government can do that because, you see, we are the richest nation in the world because we have natural resources that are unparalleled. We have forests, massive forests of trees. We have gold and silver reserves, folks. We have oil. We have high-tech production facilities. We have computer manufacturing. We have an incredible educated workforce. That's the wealth of America. That's value added in any economic formula, folks. And we don't need the Federal Reserve to keep making money, 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 literally printing their own money and charging interest on the use of it. That needs to stop. And it needs to stop now. So the formula, as I was getting to before the break, is simply this. You simply calculate the entire gross domestic product, whether it's Apple computer factories, whatever corporations are churning out goods and services, you add all that together, that's the flow of goods and services, and then you basically you can calculate. This is the formula that was done by a gentleman that, uh, by the name of Jonathan May, who was arrested, a British citizen who was arrested and trumped up charges. Because, you see, he had a formula, his Sodalitas Trust. You take all, all natural resources and monetize them. That's our value of our basic wealth of this country. There is no need for people to live in poverty in this great country. Zero need. And you don't need to take from the rich steal it in the form of taxes to pay for that. America's wealth can be distributed evenly to people all across the spectrum. That's not socialism, ladies and gentlemen. That's the ultimate icon of republicanism, of a republic, of the people, by the people. The resorts, the, the assets, you see, are for the people. See, communism is just the opposite. It's, it's keeping the people down and the power brokers at the top make all of the wealth. Brigham Young, you see, was uh, a communist. This, they called, they didn't call it communism back then. They called it the United Order of Early Utah. But you see... He wanted to have every, everybody even and equal and working. But the problem was he lived grander and better than anybody else. He was the king, you see. And it didn't sit well with people working their tails off and seeing that he didn't and lived in opulent splendor in the beehive house with 30 plus wives. That didn't sit well. They realized they were just enriching a despot. And that's the problem with communism for the most part, folks. It's not that's that everybody is working to be poor, not evenly distributing the wealth. That's the purest form of Plato's Republic. 
that's the vision that's put out in the green book of Muammar Gaddafi. I've said this many times. Folks, take a minute and download, just Google up the green book, Muammar Gaddafi, and get a free copy. It's all online. You can read it. The blueprint for a really an equitable, fair, true republic is there in his book. I don't know if that's actually the way things really were in Libya, but it's a great, great you know document to, of an outline. It's right on. It explains why, why eventually a democracy will revert back into a plutocracy run by the wealthy corporations, and that's exactly what you know America's run today by very wealthy political action committees that are basically, again, corporations running the scenes, getting the lucrative contract at the expense of people, of small people, you see. But all of that doesn't need to even happen if you understand the very basic problem, that our system of Federal Reserve notes is based on fraud, and it's hypocritical in the extreme to not recognize that and debate that if you're a politician. It could be that you're ignorant of it, but really it's the 800-pound gorilla or the two-ton elephant in the room that nobody wants to discuss. Nobody dares discuss. You talk about being politically incorrect to talk about the Federal Reserve and the people behind it, the so-called Jews who say they are Jews, but are not. You're anti-Semitic to even say that. You see, that's why the topic of the Federal Reserve Bank is taboo. It goes back again to the guilt trips you know, the big lie of the six million people that were exterminated in the concentration camp. That's a, that's a big lie and a big hoax. That one is, too. Let me give you a hint here, folks. A few years back, the Orthodox Jews of New York and even in Israel were screaming mad concerning the LDS Mormon churches baptizing of Holocaust victims. I mean, you've, this has been cropping up in, in the news every once in a while. The LDS church in Salt Lake City promised then, promised the Jewish rabbis that they would no longer do such a thing. They would honor the Jewish request and they would not baptize and uh, do other temple work for these dead individuals. Let me tell you, folks, that's just one. It's not that they were upset about the Jews becoming Mormons in the hereafter. I know for a fact the real reason they were upset about all this, the real politically incorrect problems. You see, I understand, as I used to work as a Mormon in the extraction, so-called extraction process, the means of gathering names, you see, is called extraction in the Mormon lingo. The extraction process in Mormonism is pretty intense and, and pretty doggone accurate. They go into, they have a, tr a tremendous database where they can actually trace and track deceased people. So, here's the story. Six million Jews, they said. Well, that's a huge, huge reservoir of names of work to be done. So, we need to go in and extract names and, and verify the deaths so we can get the work done. Here's the problem, folks. There wasn't no six million deaths. 
the extraction experts could only locate about 50, 60,000 Jews in these concentration camps that expired. Where are the six million? It didn't happen. So the issue became, well, we Jews can't have people baptizing God's chosen people in the temples. That's the issue. Not that they couldn't locate six million names to do the work for them. See, that's the big story here. But you can't declare that because you basically become a Holocaust denier and you become anti-Semitic. And trust, trust me, folks, the Mormon church is tied to the hip with these Khazar imposters. That's, they're not going to bite the hand that feeds them. Oh, yes, I'm stirring up the hornet's nest. I understand that, but the truth is the truth. And by God, it's about time people stood up for the truth and quit mealing, mouthing around, ignoring the story. The big issue is who is the Federal Reserve and why? Good heavens, Glenn Beck broaches the subject on his TV show, heaven forbid, he brings in Mr. Griffith, the author of the book, The Creature from Jekyll Island, and interviews him. But, you know, he, Glenn Beck is oh, just going to trot around the surface. He's going to mock anybody that talks about the Rothschilds. But he gave out enough. He let the cat's nose out of the bag just enough that the power brokers by the scene canceled his TV show. So Glenn Beck jumps up and, oh, my God, my... Goose is cooked unless I do some major butt kissing back in Israel. So he can so he has a Glenn Beck tour of Israel and he waves the Israel flag. Israel, 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 God is calling. And salvages his radio show and gets a hundred million dollar payment. Please let me find a place where I can go barf. You prostitute for truth. You prostituted truth, Glenn Beck. You pushed the envelope of truth to the very edge, and you got your your butt singed, and you realized, golly, i got to keep my ego intact. i got to keep my my radio show intact. i got to go kiss the butt of Bain Capital, boys, and the Israeli defense forces who owns my gravy train, my meal ticket, clear channel radio network. I want to show that I'm, I'm really all about Israel, Israel, Israel. First, first, first. And the lucrative reward was given. A hundred million dollars for five years. Twenty million dollars. Forty-two thousand dollars a radio show. Holy mackerel. Holy mackerel. Never mind that Clear Channel is in the red. Six billion dollars has no way to really pay that. But see, it's okay because we're into deficit spending. It's okay because you know what? We're tired of Federal Reserve boys and we need money. We'll get it. We'll continue to be able to make payments even though we're not profitable. It's like the Federal Reserve System is designed to be. You don't need to really be profitable. You just need to be able to have power and control the system. Makes, makes me see red, folks. Because the scam keeps getting deeper and deeper and deeper. And people keep getting more and more divisive. People get, oh, we're going to take back, we're the, we're the 99%. We're going to take away the 1%. We're going to have class war. That's exactly the rhetoric that they spewed out in the Bolshevik Revolution, the 1915 era in Russia. Exactly, exactly the same rhetoric. Folks, that brings us to another issue here. Weather 
control. The name label it. They used to have it called global warming. No, it's not. It's climate change. Now it's not global warming. All of these free spots, this record cold, is because there's warming in other parts of the globe. It's climate change. Al Gore got paid millions to come up and do that ridiculous mess that he put out. And the scientists are all refuted. It's completely bogus, but it doesn't matter. People think, well, it's got to happen. No, ladies and gentlemen, it's called HARP technology. It's called the ability to heat the upper atmosphere, to heat the upper atmosphere to the point or have manipulation of the jet streams. You manipulate the jet streams, you move them around, you guess what happens. You can, you can take and create a hurricane. You can create an, a hurricane, Isaac. You absolutely can. And you can actually guide it anywhere you want. If you want it to have it be really nasty, you can make it nasty, or you can dissipate it as it as happens. That's the technology, folks. There's no doubt about it. So when you're looking at a record heat wave, a drought, you can thank the Rothschild House of Rothschild weather controllers for this. House of Rothschild owns the weather channel. They actually own the dissemination of the Doppler charts. Causing droughts, causing lack of food is another scenario. It's exactly, again, they, they didn't have heart back in the 1910s. But they have manipulated food shortages big time. They destroyed crops. They shut down rail lines to transport food to the cities especially St. Petersburg and other big cities, they shut down. People get very angry when they don't have bread. When they don't have food, they're easy to blame the government. You talk about the haves and the have-nots. The truth is that our food price is going to spike. There's a lot of a lot of crops that have just flat out been ruined this year. The drought is amazing. So we enter into September and October. Watch for food prices to spike. Availability to absolutely be heard in many places of this country. So when I talk about the Federal Reserve banking families, understand that they're also control the technology to change the weather. Climate change is not caused by CO2 gases, folks. That's, a, that's been refuted by dozens, if not hundreds now, of scientists the world over. It's not the factories that are just belching out Pollution that causes global warming. No, 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 no. You know, you know, the plankton blooms, ladies and gentlemen, in the oceans of the world create vastly t dozens of times more CO2 than any output of human production. Oh, yes. There are changes in climate, but they're not because of CO2 emissions and industrialization and pollution. It's because of scientific breakthroughs and manipulation by means of those scientific breakthroughs that causes climate change. And who are they that's doing it? Ladies and gentlemen, it's the same, it's the same people. You see, you unfold, you peel back the skin of the onion, you see different layers of the stinky onion that brings tears to your eyes. You peel it back, you see the first layer is the same group of 
people controlling the money supply. You see then the same group of people manipulating science to control weather patterns. And you see the same group of people, ladies and gentlemen, controlling the energy of the planet. The same cartel, ladies and gentlemen, is controlling OPEC and controlling gas and oil prices. Same people. You see them stopping free energy. People don't realize that you can take water, Heinz and Pons and Fleischmann, the University of Utah, proved that you can take water and through a process they just labeled cold fusion, create energy. Non-radioactive, clean, free energy. And that's all been stopped. They've been blackballed. They've been criticized. And the story by the story of that, just real quickly, Pons and Fleischmann were hired to work in R&D of Toyota Corporation, the Japanese Toyota. <clears throat> the fact is, folks, Toyota has a protocol based on the working model of cold fusion. Yes, indeed, a Toyota vehicle that can run on water. That's the wave of the future, and why do you think that hasn't come? All because, you see, Toyota was brought to their knees because of sticking accelerators. Yeah, oh, come on, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's called Little Black Box. It's controlled by a central computer by the Federal Transportation Commission. The truth is stranger than fiction. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, Dr. Odd, you're really a conspiracy theorist. No, it's absolutely fact, ladies and gentlemen. Check it out. We'll take a break. We'll come back. What do you think about this? Wonder why I'm against this tribe? I, I can't stomach their hypocrisy and their greed. That's why. Come back up this message. You gotta listen to the doctor, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, indeed, I'm trying to get people to understand the the big lie. We don't need to go to gold and silver backgrounds. I'm not I'm not down on gold and silver. I know. Please understand. I understand. There's a value there. It's it's a wonderful hedge against inflation. I highly recommend silver, especially silver. It's a as a safe haven for your money, it's, everybody should have a bunch of silver baggage. And I, and I, and I, so, and by the way, silver and gold are soaring based on the dollar's decline. Silver's over $32 an, an ounce, and gold is pushing 1700 Again, it's on the rise as the dollar waffles. The dollar, it shouldn't be called the dollar, it should be called the Federal Reserve Bank, Bankster Notes. But understand this, folks, we cannot, we cannot go back to a gold standard. There's a reason. There's a reason why the economists pressured Lyndon Baines Johnson to debauch the coinage. You see, there's a reason for it. And, there, you know, in many ways, that sound, there, there's a, you know, I, I, just, I, I know enough. You know, about Wall Street and economies. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I used to be a Wall Street broker. I know how to analyze a chart. I know how to analyze currencies. Okay, I know how to do that. So I understand the reasons in the 1960s. You see, the and, and Kennedy was right on point when he declared in his public speeches, America's in a, in a point of explosion as far as our industry is concerned and, it, and it's true reaching an unparalleled stratospheric growth and the, the thing that was keeping America from expanding you see there was not enough silver or gold in existence to cover the currency needs that's again part of economic theory 
See, if you have nothing but silver and it's limited, you know, you limit the ability of people to exchange currency at that point. It's not to say you should debauch the value of the coinage. That was flat out wrong to do that. It was despicable to do that. But you see, the role of the federal government at that point should have been exactly what, Link, what Lincoln did and what Kennedy attempted to do before he was assassinated as well, to begin the transition to at least have the Treasury issue money as well, not tied to the Federal Reserve usury. The $2 bill, the silver certificate of the Kennedy era, I have copies of those. My friend Bill still violent, vehemently disagrees with me when I say that Kennedy was was doing But I, I disagree strongly with Bill still. Kennedy was indeed getting set to take back America's currency from the feds. And the reason why he was so upset about it is he understood who they were. He understood who these... Edomites were. He understood what was going on in the Demona nuclear plant. The treasonous, the treasonous, traitorous spies that were bringing nuclear secrets to Israel. And he drew a line in the sand with Israel, folks. To the point where Prime Minister Ben-Gurion resigned. He said, you are not building a nuclear bomb. You are not. And folks, that's the reason why he was assassinated. It was a Mossad organized Jewish mafia hit, a coup d'etat. That's all there was to that. Truth is the truth. I think at the very last he understood the murder of Defense Secretary James Forrestal. He understood what was really going on. He really got a, got a, a full, full earful from his economic advisors. He understood that really to get America back on track, to really make America prosperous and free, they had to have debt-free currency. I don't care. I don't know where Bill Steele doesn't get this part of it, and I have all the respect for Bill Steele and his work. But he just flat out ignores the executive order that Kennedy issued, ordering the Treasury to begin printing debt-free currency. And for a while they did, but the. The thing that Bill still, and I don't see why he doesn't get this and put it on his video, because it's important. The, the very first official act of Lyndon Baines Giant, the Lion ba Bastard Johnson, did, was revoke Executive Order 11110. He reversed that order and stopped the Treasury from printing those bills. Very first thing. First item on the agenda. When he was after he was sworn in on that airplane after the death of Kennedy. It's all about the money, ladies and gentlemen, really it truly is. Never forget what Rothschild said himself. The, this is the, the most important quote. He says, he declared this, give me control of the nation's currency, and I care not who makes its laws. Think about it. Give me control of the nation's currency. And really, it doesn't matter who makes this loss, because I control the real power basis 
I control both parties, all parties. I control everything if I am the producer and controller of currency. So to take back America, to restore America, you know all these restore America plans, please, it's hyperbole, it's superfluous fluff. Until you get down to the basics, truth of the sex, until you get back the nation's lifeblood, its means of trade, folks, its very lifeblood. You'll never make any meaningful changes whatsoever. We'll never restore America. The principles of the Constitution, the principles of the Bill of Rights, folks mean nothing if you have no commerce. You have to have a base to operate from. Yeah, you know, all of these principles of of the people, by the people, for the people, the grand vision of republic is indelibly tied to honest, debt-free currency. Otherwise, you're just flapping around in the wind, meaning nothing. And these banksters are not stupid. They understand that. That's why this is the most taboo of all taboo subjects to discuss. Why they don't want the people to understand this one. Give me control of the nation's currency, Amshel Rothschild said. And I care not who makes its laws. The reverse of that is true. Take back the nation's currency, issue it from the Treasury Department, debt-free, and suddenly you have a republic back. I'm willing to discuss it with anybody as to why this basic philosophy is misguided and wrong. I've discussed it with other people in this sense. Well, the Federal Reserve has experts. They're experts in economists. They understand how to, to trap. Oh, as if the Treasury Department can't bring the same experts into play. The tribe called the Jews have no corner on mark trends and mapping gross domestic products and harvests. And you see the problem, folks? That's the only thing. Well, the Federal Reserve are the expert. Oh, please! So that means they should charge you eight and a quarter percent percent for every new dollar bill that they generate. Incredible amounts of profit and power to unelected people operating in the shadows behind the scenes. People ask me all the time, well, are you going to vote? No, I'm not going to vote because I, it's a waste of time to vote for a president candidate because it's all just a charade. I will vote the day that the Federal Reserve is demolished and an open, honest system is installed. I'll vote like crazy and, and campaign mightily for any any campaign that has its basic plank, the, dis, the dissolution of the Federal Reserve System. Well, didn't Ron Paul do that? No, Dr. Paul didn't do that. He gets up there in his pip, squeaky little voice, we need to audit the Fed, they ought to audit the Fed. It's just like Glenn Beck. Oh, the federal! You know, it gives you enough of a of a soundboard to make you think he's going to do something, but it's but he doesn't. Why aren't you a Ron Paul fan, Doctor Odd? He's the only hope for America. Oh, please! He's he's what the again the protocols of the wise men of Zion. They they said they'll provide controlled opposition. They'll provide 
pressure outlets, pressure valves to release, to make people give them false hope. False hope is the icon of Ron Paul and his son Rand. You can tell, folks, the bottom line is this man speaks out and says all so much of the right things. Yeah, he identifies it, but he, that's, it stops short. It's like getting you all dressed up in your, in your finest tuxedo and then telling you there's no place to go. Get you all excited to go to this grand ball and there's no, there's no address. There's no place to go. <laughs> Okay, oh, well, where are we going to go? We're going to go. That's my problem with Ron Paul. I told this to my friend Dane Phillips. I explained this all to him, and personally, he says, well, I, okay, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt, though. I'll go and give him a copy of my book and, and see if he can get on and you know, push hard, push hard in the debates. Remember the debates, the Republican debates? Dane Phillips called me from Iowa, very depressed. He says, boy, of all the candidates, from Rick Perry to Herman Cain to Mitt Romney, says, most disappointed by Dr. Ron Paul, absolutely gave me the finger, so to speak. He says he didn't pass the sniff. I says, I'm telling you. The man has never passed the sniff test. I was th I was hopeful he was the real deal back in 2008 when I personally sent him a thousand dollars with a letter saying, you know, please accept this donation. You're saying the right things, but I have one question for you: You're silent on the events of September 11th. Are you going to push for another? an independent commission on September 11th. The response, again, it was not from him directly, but from a staff member. He used to explain Dr. Paul, you know, basically accepts the official version of September 11th, but maintains that it's because of defective foreign policy that caused Osama bin Laden's attack, you see. Talk about passing the sniff test. Can Dr. Paul be that gullible and that stupid? No. He just is sold out like everybody else. He's not honest. You can't have any logical conclusion of September 11th other than the official story is bogus, an absolute smokescreen, again, to protect the international bankster cartel of Israel and this tribe. And that's exactly who he's protecting. That's t said all I needed to know about Dr. Ron Paul, ladies and gentlemen. He's a pressure valve, just like the protocols that the wise men of Zion called for. Give you some rhetoric and some hope, but absolutely false hope. Faith in fiction is a damnably false hope, Thomas Alva Edison wrote. And faith in a fictional candidate like Ron Paul is damnably false hope. It, it plays right into the grab bag, you see, of controlling the opposition. Tell the truth about September 11th. That's the other platform that I would demand. Come on, be honest. The Mossad did it. You know it's true. I know it's true. Thousands Tens of thousands of Americans now know that that's true, just as they were behind the assassination of John Fitzgerald Kennedy. Oh, my goodness, folks. It's time to tell the truth. Time to expose, pull the curtain back and expose these power brokers. These They, they got wealthy because of of a grand fraud and deception. The Federal Reserve is a fraud, an absolute fraud, and the Internal Revenue Service is their Gestapo, their terror organization to keep people shaking in their boots. They don't want to be audited. They don't want to cause the IRS people to come and audit them, 
IRS audit equals fear and quaking. Incredible. Incredible. Revenue. <laughs> oh, oh, golly, revenue. This Paul Krugman article that I talked about in the first part and, and quoted in its entirety from the New York Times. Paul Ryan is the Rosie Ruiz of politics. He's calling Paul Ryan the Rosie Ruiz, the shortcutter, the the fraud, basically. And he's Krugman. I uh, gotta believe he's Edomite. Because he himself is not discussing the biggest fraud of all, which is the Federal Reserve and the need for revenue. Can't cut who oh, tax 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 cut tax 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 tax. Gee, many Christmas. There's no need to steal the profits, to steal the wages of America's working class at all. No need. It's a big, the big scam. All it does is simply pay the expenses, pay the interest on the usurious debt load. But it's absolutely fraudulent to begin with. But doesn't the government need taxes to run its... No, 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 no. Government controls the currency. They print the money. There is no need to produce revenue by taxation. They produce it by the printing press. It's called electronic debt. They can do whatever they want in spending, folks. The question is, does it create new debts to the Federal Reserve Banksters or not? That's the question. I had a good long interview with a retired gentleman from top-level position of the private Internal Revenue Service Company. I had a very, you know, I, I, I brought in my documentation. He, he wouldn't go on the record, of course. He says this is, a lot of people end up disappearing when they talk about this, he's told me. I showed him my research that the Internal Revenue Service was a, private for-profit corporation even found out who some of the stockholders of record were he says yep yeah, we know that it's a for-profit collection agency and he said something that was so right on he says I, I came to the realization the last 10 years of my career that we were just uh perpetrating a scam because he says it's real it's a real what you said is right is absolutely a reality the government does not need money to operate for they have their own system of printing right now they they control it they simply need the internal revenue service to create fear and to exercise power. Well, that's a huge, huge truth, ladies and gentlemen. See, the emperor does not have any clothes on. He's sitting there buck naked, but the people think he's dressed in all of this incredible fine clothing. What a scam, and, and it just continues. People's got to change their way of thinking. This currency in your wallet, whether it's a $100 bill or a $1,000 bill, it's just a piece of paper, ladies and gentlemen, with numbers on it. The only thing that makes it valuable is the people's faith that is redeemed by who? By the government. And that in lies, there lies the key. That's the understanding that you need to take to your, take and think about, ladies and gentlemen. Think about it as you go into this political season and watch these candidates 
do exchange their sound bites. What a what a what a play. What a what a tragedy. Gentlemen, I've said enough. Think about what I've said today. God bless. Back tomorrow.